Welcome to Daedalus U. I'm Paul, coming to you from Brooklyn. Today we're going to take a look at solving polynomials. So let's get started. Up here on the big board I have a few key rules we're going to investigate today. So polynomials are cool, uh, polynomials are curves, um, a parabola is a polynomial, right? Something like this, whoop, right? Uh, but we also have third degree polynomials, something that's going to turn twice, whoop, something like that, right? So this is a third degree polynomial, x to the third, this is a second degree, and as you see in rule number one, the, the number of roots is equal to the highest degree, this is the degree in a polynomial, and these are the roots. So roots are x-intercepts, they're also called solutions, when we set the equation equal to zero, <clears throat> they're also called zeros, and you always know that the number of roots a given equation has is equivalent to the highest degree, or exponent, in the equation. You also know that you have real or imaginary roots. So all of these three roots that I've, uh, all of these uh, roots that I've circled so far are real roots, right? Because they're right here crossing the x-axis. But think about this parabola uh, sitting above the axis, like so. Well, then you have what are called imaginary roots. Oh no, you don't cross the x-axis, but you still will have two roots. They'll just be imaginary roots. Now, if you have imaginary roots, keep in mind that you always include the conjugate pair. So, in other words, if I have, say, uh, 6 minus i as a root, well, I'm also going to have 6 plus i. Keep in mind that that conjugate pair is always, um, uh, well, together. Okay, now, uh, today we're going to look particularly at these two next formulas, number 3 and 4, the sum of the roots and the product of the roots. So, uh, you know, the general form of a polynomial is as written here, a to the n, which is just a coefficient, times x to the n, which is our highest degree um, uh, variable, plus a to the n minus 1, times x to the n minus 1, just meaning, you know, plus the next coefficient and the next uh, one lower degree variable, and so on and so forth, all the way down to the constant. Notice the constant cannot be equal to 0. When that is the case, the sum of the roots is equivalent to, and let me just simplify this, I mean, it's actually a, uh, a beautiful and elegant formula. All it says is that if you take this coefficient here, right, that's a to the n minus 1, over this coefficient, put a little minus sign in front of it, well then you've solved for the sum of the roots, and we'll see how to do that in just a moment. The product of the roots is going to be uh, found by taking this last constant, see, the a sub o, and putting it over again, that first coefficient a sub n. Notice that you have to add a negative sign if the n, if again the highest degree, is odd, such as a third degree polynomial or a fifth or so forth. Okay, so let's look at some questions. This question says find a cubic equation uh, that has 3 and 7 minus i as two of its roots. Alright, so we know a fair bit of information. Right, we we know the roots. Uh, I want you to know that my handwriting um, is bad in real life too. It's not just this program. We know that we have the roots of three they gave us, and then we have seven minus i. Now, what I just said was when you have an imaginary root, you also have its conjugate. The conjugate is essentially um, <clears throat> the same thing with the sign changed. So we also know that 7 plus i is a root. Okay? So that's great. We have all three roots. Now, why don't we go ahead and use our sum formula. And you don't really have to for this question, but I want to. And then we'll check in later after we've solved for the cubic equation and see if it checks out. So the sum, as I said on the page before, is equivalent to negative uh, the second coefficient, which... Let's say, let's say our cubic ends up being, I'm, I'm going to sort of simplify the, um, uh, the, the coefficients here. Let's say we just have a x to the third plus b x squared plus cx plus d. So essentially this question is asking us to solve for these, these coefficients given these roots. Uh, well, then the sum is going to be, remember, it's the negative, the second one, so negative b over a, 
and the product, let's go back to orange, the product is going to be equal to, well, again, it's a third degree equation, so there is going to be a negative, and for consistency, we'll go back here to dark blue, and remember, that was the last one, so D over A, okay? And look, we can go ahead and solve for the sum right now, because we have all the roots. So the sum would be 3 plus 7 minus i plus 7 plus i. So the i's cancel, and lo and behold, we have 14 plus 3, which is 17. Now, I'm going to cheat real quick and tell you that in this equation, a ends up being 1. So essentially what we're seeing is when we do the work over on the left-hand side of the big board here, we'll see if our B comes out to 17. Or negative 17, there's a negative here. All right. Okay, now let's check for the D. D is the product of the roots. The product's a little bit more interesting. We're going to do 3 times, then we have to FOIL our conjugate pair. 7 minus I, 7 plus I. So when you FOIL the conjugate pair, let's do it right here, we get 3, we'll leave out front, times 49, that's 7 times 7, inner and outer terms go away, minus i squared. Now we know i squared is negative 1. 49 minus a negative 1 is 3 times 50, which is 150. As I told you, the little secret, A in this question is 1, so essentially we're going to see if D works out to be negative 150. So let's, let, let's solve for the actual cubic equation now. Well, how would you do so? If we know these are the roots, well, essentially that means that x minus 3, say, is a factor of the equation, right? Um, uh, uh, if you've fully factored a an equation, uh, essentially, when you set that equal to zero, you've, you've also simultaneously solved for the roots. Um, and so, essentially, what I'm saying is we know that this equation, and I'll just go ahead and write it out here, is going to be equal to x minus 3. Again, x minus 3 is a factor because 3 is a root times x minus the other roots, which are our imaginary conjugate pair. So x minus 7 minus i and x minus 7 plus i. Okay, so in order to find the equation, all we have to do is multiply this out. Not so bad. We're going to leave our x minus 3 out front. We'll go ahead and foil this mess. Um, I recommend foiling it just as is, as opposed to distributing the negative, you know, just treating it like x minus the uh, entity, uh, 7 minus i. So let me show you what I mean. What we get is when, when we do our first, we get x squared. When we, when we do our outer, so I'm foiling, f-o-i-l, outer, we get minus x times that quantity, 7 plus i. When we do our inner, we get minus x times the quantity 7 minus i. And then when we do our last terms, well, we get negative times negative is plus, And then we have to FOIL, again, this conjugate pair. I'm going to go ahead and do it. We just did it uh, over here, so we remember what it comes out to. It's uh, 49 minus i squared. 49. Inner and outer go away in a conjugate pair, and we get minus I squared. Okay? And end parentheses. So, now we still have our x minus 3 waiting out front. Let's simplify uh, in here by multiplying our x through. So that's minus 7x minus x times i minus another 7x. Just distributing. I'm watching the sign. Negative x times negative i is plus now xi. And we'll go ahead and say minus an i squared is minus a negative 1, which is plus 1. So we have a plus 50 here. So far, so good. Okay, let's uh, simplify uh, by combining like terms. 
So we get x squared. Notice these guys go away. So minus 14x plus 50. So just a few more steps here. We have, we're going to now distribute the x to each term. So, you know, first we have x times x squared. That's x to the third. Essentially, there's just some tedious algebra here left. Minus 14x squared plus 50x. Okay, let's distribute here. Minus 3x squared plus, what does that come out to? 28 plus another 14 is 42. And that's x and then minus 150. You might notice our 150 has already shown up. So last step, combine like terms, and we have the cubic equation. It is x to the third. When we combine the x squared terms, we get minus 17 x squared plus, looks like, 92 x. And then lastly, minus 150. So indeed, Let's check our B term is negative 17, right, right here. And our D term is negative 150. Get that negative in there. And look, if we were to plug that in here, right, plug in the negative 17 here, and of course, over the A, let's not forget that A equals 1. I kind of uh, spoiled that, uh, shared that news early. And if we plug negative 17 into negative b over a, we do in fact get 17, check. And if we plug negative 150 into negative d over a, we do get 150. So we've discovered the cubic equation, and we've also confirmed our sum and product formulas. Let's take a look at one more today. This says find the integers, b and c, such that the equation x to the third plus bx squared plus cx plus 8 equals 0 has 2i as one of its roots. All right, so what do we know? We know some of the roots, right? We know 2i is a root. And let's not forget, when you have 2i, you also have the conjugate pair. But this is a third degree equation, right? So let's just say... You know, maybe x is a little... No, let's just call the third root x. That's fine. Okay, now let's rely on our sum and difference formulas. So the sum, as we know, is equal to negative this coefficient. So here it's called b. Negative b over the coefficient for x to the third, which is just 1, over 1. And we can, we can set that equal to, well, the sum of our roots, which is 2i plus a negative 2i, which, of course, will cancel, plus x, right? And x, of course, is the unknown root. We're trying to uh, sort of figure that out, uh, and, and then we'll be able to use that to solve for these coefficients, b and c. In other words, this, this, this simplifies pretty nicely to x equals negative b after these guys cancel out. Let's take a look at the product. The product of the roots is equal to, well, this is a third degree equation, <laughs> so we need our extra negative, and it's equal to the constant here, 8 over a, which is just 1. I'm going to leave it out. And that's equal to, well, that's equal to the actual product of the roots. Let's go ahead and multiply our roots together. Negative 2i and the unknown x. Well, what does that get us? That essentially is negative 8 equals 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 times i squared times x. i squared is negative 1. Negative 4 times negative 1 is just 4. All right, I'm going to continue over here. So negative 8 equals 4x and so look lo and behold we've already solved for x just through this formula x is negative 2 
Well, and let's continue this one too. If we know that x is negative 2 and that negative 2, that x is equal to negative b, well then now we know that b is 2. So look how useful our sum and product formulas have proven. Right? We already know b and we also know a root. So let's look at the last step. Let's go back to magenta. Uh, and let's plug in the b that we saw for. So now we know that x to the third plus 2x squared plus some unknown c times x plus 8 equals 0. Okay, great. We're very close. We also know this third root. I'm going to go ahead and write it here. This third root is negative 2. Now a root means we can plug that in to the equation for x and it should, lo and behold, be true, right? So let's do so. If we plug negative 2 in here, so negative 2 cubed plus 2 times negative 2 squared, let's say minus 2c plus 8 equals 0. Not bad, right? Uh, negative 2 cubed is still negative 8. Negative 2 squared is positive 4 times 2, so that's plus 8 minus that 2 times the unknown c, plus another 8 equals 0. These guys are going to cancel out, and we're left with negative 2c equals, we'll move the 8 over here, negative 8, and so voila, c is 4. And so the final equation is x to the third plus, oh, let's take that away, let's just write minus, minus, because the x is uh, negative, oh, that's not true, the b is positive, <laughs> plus uh, 2x squared, plus 4x, plus 8. That is our equation. And that is the end of part 1 of solving polynomials, but please stick around for part two. We're going to look at a particularly challenging question. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the future.